welcome back to another vid, another Wednesday week. So yeah, I think the last Wednesday week I did was a couple of weeks ago, maybe three. Can't remember. The one before that was about three years. So we're getting back into a, a regular swing of things, which is good. So yeah, in the corner of the screen, I know you can't see it and I always say that, I've got a, a notepad open with a few bullet points. That's all it is, it's bullet points, just words. Um, what I haven't got is a script. Never had a script in my life, but the other day when I did my childhood nostalgia um, response video, it was a tag response video that I did, and I had fun making it, and if you watched it, thank you, and if you didn't, well, thanks very much, thanks for your support. I'm joking, obviously, you know, there's only so many hours in a day, and, you know, I would love to watch everything, but it's hard, isn't it? We've got commitments, and loads of channels that we're subscribed to, it's impossible to watch everything. So just watch what you can, um, what what interests you, I guess. Really, uh, never feel obliged. Never ever feel obliged. I never get offended. I've said all this a million times before. But anyway, so I did that. The point is, I made that video the other day. It was fun making it because it's nostalgia, it's childhood. I love talking about that kind of thing. So um, yeah, it, it was enjoyable. Now it made me laugh though because the video lasted about thirty to forty minutes, give or take. And after a few minutes, there was a comment which arrived. And that, so they, they can't watch the whole vid. Um, and there was a thumb down straight away. Okay, fine, fair enough. So I clicked on the video, uh, on the channel. Oh, sorry, the comment. Let me tell you what the comment said. The comment said, another scripted YouTuber who takes his childhood. And I got this notification, this comment, and I, what the hell does that mean? Another scripted YouTuber. I've never had a script in my life. This isn't a script, what I'm doing here. It's just one word that I'd put on a notepad when I'm doing like a vlog. So I don't forget what I want to talk about. And so, for example, I've wrote here, Mr. Script. Now, that'll, that'll be relevant in a second. Um, so I've wrote Mr. Script. I can see that. I've written it down. And then I can elaborate on it and, uh, and, and talk further. And then the next thing I've got is nephews that I've wrote underneath that, underneath that. So I'm going to talk about nephews. So it's not a script I've got. It's just words. So I don't forget to talk about what I want to talk about. Unbelievable. So, yeah, another scripted YouTuber who takes his childhood. And I read it and I was like, what does that mean? I thought, first of all, like I say, I've, I've never scripted a video in my life, ever. It should be evident. I stumble and bumble my way through words and sentences. Um, I often go off on tangents. If anyone doesn't have a script, it's me. But apparently uh, there's two people, um, this one who left a comment, and someone else who think that I have a script. And one of them knows me as Mr. Script, apparently. That's my name. Uh, from, from this particular YouTuber, whoever he is, don't know. Anyway, so I got this comment uh, that came through, sorry to repeat it again, but another scripted YouTuber who takes his childhood. I thought, what does it takes mean? I thought maybe um, he meant to say takes his childhood seriously. Maybe he just missed the word off the end of his, uh, of his post, his sentence. But even then, I don't take it seriously. So I thought, what is he talking about? So I responded to it and I said, what does that even mean? I remember saying, what does that even mean? And press, pressing, you know, like the, the post or comment button. Clicked on the guy's channel. Never heard of him before. Never heard of the guy's name. Uh, obviously didn't have any videos to his channel, clearly. It's usually anonymous. And I just thought, well, that is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, so I said, what do you mean by that? He went back, he, he came back and he, he replied to the comment. But also, he edited his original comment. So it now said, another scripted YouTuber who fakes his childhood. So takes should have been fakes. So he was accusing me of faking my childhood. Unbelievable. So basically, the gist of this guy, right, what his problem was, apart from the fact that he told me in, in his response that he talks to this other UK YouTuber who told him that he knows me as Mr. Script because he says, I've always got a script, and for all my videos, I've never had a script in my life. Must be confusing me with someone else. So anyway, so I kind of dealt with that by saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Never had a script in my life, and it should be obvious by watching my vids that I don't have a script. Um, and I said, well, what do you mean by lying? He went, oh, yeah, you're lying. He says, you've never been to America. You're not there now. You never went as a kid. Uh, what, were you rich or something? It's like, mate, I was seven or eight. I didn't go by myself. I didn't turn around to my mum in 1986, Christmas 86, and go, oh, if you don't mind, just going to nip off to Florida. I went with my family. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. But also the biggest thing I think this guy was uh, accusing me of lying about was I talked about a cinema, right? A cinema called the UC, uh, UCI Cinema. It was a 10-screen cinema. I think it's still there. I don't know if it's the Odeon or whatever name it is. Remember, I've not been there for nearly a decade, so I have no idea. 
But back in the late 80s and the early 90s, it had like five booths, four or five, something like that. I can't remember. It was 26 years ago, the story that I was um, anecdoting. 26 years. And uh, I was, um, at the time, I think there was like four or five different booths. In other words, counters you could go up to, checkouts, if you like, people behind everyone where you could buy tickets and stuff. And this particular guy who accused me of being Mr. Script and said I was lying about being in America and going to America and all this kind of stuff. He said, oh, no. He said, I'd been there before and you're, you're lying. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm not lying. So me being me, I went out of my way. By the way, I wasn't swearing or anything. I was just really shocked at this person's accusations. I went out of my way stupidly. I should have just ignored him. I went out of my way. I went onto Google and I found an image of the UCI cinema where it showed several lines of people queuing up, buying tickets at these booths. And uh, so it proved my point. So I said, here you go. Post it in the link. I said, there you go. There's the pictures. So I remember saying something like, you can apologise later, like LOL, smiley face. Again, I wasn't swearing, nothing aggressive. He comes back to me, he went, no. He said, no. He says, those are bays. They are not booths. So I think what his point was, he accused me of lying, but really the only thing he was annoyed about was I used the word booths or checkouts or counters. What I didn't do, I didn't use the word bay. Because I didn't use the word bay, even though we were talking about the same thing, he accused me of lying. You couldn't make this thing up. So I kind of laughed about it and I went, this, mate, this is just ridiculous. And I responded to it and I said, it's a real shame that you've chosen to be so negative. Because remember, this was our first ever interaction. Never heard of this guy before, never heard of his channel. And he has chosen, this is the thing that gets me and annoys me really, uh, although it makes me laugh. He has chosen his very first interaction with me to be negative. He's accused me of lying. He's accused me of having a script. And he's wrong on both of them. It's unbelievable. I said, it's a real shame that you've chosen to listen to this other person who has clearly influenced you into thinking I've got a script and lie. And you have believed him. You've never watched a video of mine in your life. And you've gone in there negatively. I said, that's a real shame that you've chosen to do that, mate. But And I did use the phrase, mate. I said, but, you know, uh, what can you do? Fair enough, kind of thing. Now, to his credit, if you can give him credit, um, what he did is he deleted the conversation. He didn't respond to it, but he deleted it. Which says to me that either he felt a bit guilty or I kind of rumbled him a little bit because maybe he wasn't expecting a response. Because when people kind of troll you, I think sometimes they don't expect a response. They just leave a comment with the purpose of kind of annoying you. And then they don't always bank on you responding to it. Never respond negatively because you'll get involved in a war of words. It's pointless. But if you're going to try and converse with them, um, then I, I don't see that as being a problem. That's what I was doing. It's very, almost from my perspective, quite friendly. I was just like, well, what do you mean? What, why are you saying that kind of thing? So he deleted his, uh, his, his comments. Now, when, now, if, for example, let's say I go onto your channel, right, on your video, and I make a comment and then you respond to that and then we have a bit of an exchange friendly obviously because i wouldn't be rude uh, never intentionally anyway uh, always banter uh, if ever if ever it seems a bit like kind of on the edge it's all just a banter that's all it is and i know sometimes through text it can be difficult sometimes to gauge how a person's feeling but you should know people after a few years how they are whether they're being rude or not but anyway i digress so let's say i do that and then let's say i think you know what i'm going to delete that comment all i've got to do is go to that comment the very first one I made on your video and delete it and the whole conversation disappears and that's what happened on mine so we didn't just delete uh, his last comment he deleted his very first comment which meant all my responses went as well so on that video there's no proof whatsoever that we had this conversation he's gonna accuse me of lying now you're lying prove it oh bloody hell well, it's probably still in my email so there we are so the only visual proof apart from being in my email of the fact that I got this co uh, comment notification would be the two thumbs down, uh, dislikes, two thumbs down, one from him and I think the other person which arrived at a similar time from the, the one who knows me as Mr. Script. Unbelievable. I'm not Mr. Script. I've never had a script. But even if I did have a script, is there anything wrong with that? I mean, I know one or two people, I won't name them, I don't embarrass them, um, but I know one or two people on YouTube who may be watching this, who clearly have a script, who have said before they have a script, they're quite open about that. But what's wrong with that? I think it be it can be quite professional, really, can't it? If that's what you're looking for, if those are the kind of videos you want to make, what's wrong with being professional and having a script? Um, do what you want. I wouldn't do it because I personally, just for me, I feel a bit uncomfortable with a script. I, it would be obvious I'm reading one. I wouldn't be very good at acting it and making it look natural. 
Some people can do that. With me, it's just a case of make a note of something, like I put Mr. Script, and then I can start talking about it for the rest of time. You can't shut me up sometimes. But I've never had a script. I'd have thought that is obvious for everybody who watches me. that I am not Mr. Script. Must be getting me confused with someone else. But, but like I say, the bigger picture is that I just found it amazing how someone can choose their very first interaction to be overwhelmingly negative, intentionally. I mean, what's the... Let's say you didn't believe me, right? Surely there's another way of going about it than calling someone a liar and saying you fake your childhood. Surely it's a case of... Like, you could have a laugh about it. Oh, it sounds a bit far-fetched, mate. Or, um, you know, I, I don't know. You could say something, but just diving on in there and being rude and aggressive... I don't get it. Am I just being am I in a minority or something? Don't get it. A swig of tea. A swig of tea calms everyone down, makes everything fine. Next comment I want to talk about. Reading off my script. Nephews. Right, yeah, so we've just had nephews over. You may see in the corner there some there we are, up at the top actually. Some of the SNES games are all kind of out of sync. They're not all there. I've moved a few. Because we had family over. They've just gone back. Uh, they arrived back last night. And, uh, but they were staying with us for a few days. And, oh, man alive. They're all aged between, I think, 7 and 12. Then there was also um, another, uh, not a nephew, what would a, uh, a son of uh, my wife's cousin be? I don't even know what. Is that kind of a nephew-in-law? I don't even know what that would be. But he was around as well. He's, he's 14, so he's a little bit older. Uh, but still, you know, that age where they're picking games up right, left and centre, leaving discs on the floor and boxes and... Oh, man alive, it was a nightmare. So what I did the other day is I took all these SNES games, I took them all, well, apart from a few, and I moved them. I thought, I am not risking having some of these Super Nintendo games, some of which have cost me well over 100 quid, several of them. I am not having them battered, no way. I'll leave a few out, but um, no, not happening. So I moved them. Um, but of course, when I came back in the room after like a couple of hours of them being here, playing on the, the games, uh, the, just a couple of games that I had left were on the floor. <laughs> what is this? Kids, seriously, a nightmare at times. I mean, it was kind of funny and it was cute, well, especially the youngest one, because he was showing, showing me how to play Minecraft on his, like, his tablet, his um, uh, whatever it was, an Android, I don't know, what it, whatever the hell you call it. And I was bored after two minutes, but he was trying to talk to me, for, well, it was for like the best part of an hour. We've got like a photo. I won't put it up because um, I, I just look ridiculous in it. But there's a, I'm obviously lying because I haven't provided proof. Faking my childhood. Um, but yeah, my wife took a photo when he was kind of showing me how to do this thing. And I was pretending to be really interested. And it was like, oh, God, just please save me. I need rescued from this. And then he went, you have a go on it, you know. And I was like, well, no, I'm not very good. And he was forcing it on me. I thought, okay, so I was trying to operate this tablet with like touchscreen and stuff. And no sooner had I tried to do it, it was like, no, no, you're not doing it right. Give it to me. And I was like, oh, for bloody hell, this is ridiculous. But it was cute, but seriously, it was um, it was a nightmare with them in this room because the games were everywhere. Um, well, the, the younger one especially. The older one, I think one's 11 and one's 12. It wasn't too bad, but still, at 11 and 12, you are running around a bit and causing a bit of a mess. But it's funny, so they were playing on the uh, the Xbox and the PlayStation. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront they were playing. Um, Halo, they were playing on that one. I know for a fact they were playing on it, not because I was watching them, but when I signed into my Xbox later that night or the next night, there was a couple of achievements which had been unlocked on Halo. And I've not even played it yet, shockingly, even though I've had it for a long, long time. Well, I think I, you know, that's a lie. I did play it, but I think I played it online. But I've not started the campaign. But I now have campaign achievements. So uh, that was kind of, that annoyed me. Even at my age, it was like, just leave it alone. But I did say they could go on it. So whenever I go back to Halo, um, I'm going to have to start the campaign from scratch. So I'll have to, I guess, delete their save. Or start a new one. Because I don't want to start off from where they left it. Because it's probably halfway through the game. I want to start from the beginning. Whenever it is I get to it. Probably knowing me years from now. So I've um, got this shirt all kind of scrunched up. As I'm slouching this chair. Anyway, it is what it is. So that was good having them over really. I mean, when I say it was good. I mean, it was nice having them over. You know, my mother-in-law was here as well. And one of my sister-in-laws. And yeah, just not seeing them for a while. So it's always good to kind of catch up. Um, to a degree. I think, you know, when mother-in-law's around, you <laughs> you know, you. it's nice to see them, but just every now and again. Um, but yeah, it, it was all right, joking aside. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, very briefly on this really, because this happened about two or three weeks ago, but I didn't touch upon it in my last Wednesday week. And I can't remember if that's because maybe I hadn't made the vid, or maybe I intended to talk about it the week after and I didn't make that Wednesday week vid. But it's the it was the boxing between Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. 
And for me, what a bit of a farce that was, in all honesty. Now, I'm a casual boxing fan. There was a period in time of like the mid to late 90s where I was massively into it. I mean massively into it. I was talking about it all the time. I was watching it. I was buying the pay-per-view fights, the Holyfields, the Tysons. Uh, if anyone remembers like, uh, the likes of Robin Reed and um, I guess Eubank was still knocking around, Nigel Benn, uh, Prince Nassim, all those kind of people were doing around. Steve Collins, I was really, really into it. And then like many things, I just kind of, like movies and all that kind of stuff, I kind of lost, not the passion, but I guess I lost a little bit of interest and I started doing other things, other hobbies and interests came along. And boxing very much took a back seat. But I've always kind of casually watched it still. I've just never been really hardcore or as hardcore as I was back in the mid to late 90s. Um, but I was curious about this fight. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and I don't mean to sound a bit soft and I'm not a prude far from it. But personally speaking, I'm not into the MMA and the UFC and all that kind of stuff. I think it's a bit for me. Again, I'm not soft, but it's a bit too violent for me. I'm, I'm flabbergasted, in fact, that it's even allowed. I think it's a bit too violent. And uh, you may think, come on, Alex, you know, whatever. And also you may throw at me the fact that they're doing it, um, they want to do it, you know, no one's forcing them to do it. And that's true, fair enough. If they want to do it to each other, they know the rules and all the rest of it. That's fine, it's nothing to do with me. I get it. Um, but I just don't like it. Personally speaking, I don't watch it. It's a bit too violent for me. So I thought it was a bit of a Frankenstein event. You know, you've got Floyd Mayweather, who at the time was 49 fights, 49 victories, Tied with Rocky Marciano with the all-time record. And um, Mayweather is, is a character. He's got a big mouth on him. But he is a good fighter, clearly, as 49 out of 49 would, would tell you. But I thought it was a bit of a Frankenstein event, having an MMA or UFC, I don't know the difference, I'll hold my hands up, fighter against an established, let's face it, all-time great, even though his personality is very questionable. But um, I watched it anyway. I, I did watch it. Now, I didn't do the pay-per-view... I, again, I'll hold my hands up and say that I watched it on an illegal stream. I, I wasn't that interested enough to pay for it. So um, I did watch it on a stream and it uninterrupted one as well with Sky commentary. So it was great. And the first few rounds, I was surprised actually, because obviously McGregor, I'd say, won the first three, maybe four rounds. It's been two or three weeks since the fight, so I'm struggling to remember. Uh, obviously, again, I'm lying, lying about my uh, childhood. No, but yeah, I think McGregor won the first three or four rounds. But it dawned upon me pretty quickly. I'd say around about the fourth round, I thought to myself, hang on a minute, this is probably deliberate. This is a deliberate tactic by Mayweather to tire McGregor out. McGregor will be thinking he's winning. Well, in fact, he was. Uh, Mayweather was offering very little. And yeah, it, it evidently, quite evidently, around about the fourth round, to me, became obvious that Mayweather was doing this deliberately to tire McGregor out. And then eventually, as the rounds went on, to, to batter him, really. And that's essentially what happened. He, it became, as the, the further the rounds went on, when it got to the, the maybe the fourth, but definitely the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth, which is when the technical knockout happened, I think all of those rounds, maybe one of them McGregor could possibly have won. Possibly. But they were pretty much all May, uh, Floyd Mayweather. He really came into it, and he was in cruise control. And then when the... The funny thing is, when the TKO finally came... I thought the referee probably stopped it a little bit too early, in all honesty. I thought he could have let it go on for an extra maybe, at least a few punches. If it was a few more unanswered punches, maybe then he could have stepped in. I just thought he stepped in a little bit too early. And I think in the aftermatch fight, I think McGregor himself said that. But he was never going to win. You know, he was really tired out. It was a valiant effort. It really was. He did very well those first few rounds. And if he'd have stepped up his game a little bit, he could have had Mayweather. You know, but I think that professionalism, that experience, remember he's 40, nearly 41, and it was his last ever fight. That experience of Mayweather really came through, and in the end, it was it was obvious who was going to win that. And I didn't think McGregor was going to win anyway. Part of me wanted him to win, but the other part of me, I, I just thought, I didn't think he would. And of course, he didn't. So that takes Floyd Mayweather to 50 fights and 50 victories. So he's out there on his own. As the the most successful, I guess you know, fighter ever overtaking Rocky Marciano, and for me that it because of the fight was against a UFC MMA fighter, it slightly tarnishes that record for me. It makes it look a bit ridiculous. People in the future are gonna say Rocky Marciano was overtaken by Floyd Mayweather, but I think that will always be followed up by yeah, but he got that with a victory over Conor McGregor. So it's a, a bit of a cheap fight in a way. 
it's a bit of a cheat fight and it's a bit of a cheap fight in my books. But fair play, I guess ultimately like what they say about football, you know, you can only beat what's in front of you. So he did that and you got to take your hat off to him. So fair enough. Um, I mean, like I say, he's quite arrogant really, Floyd Mayweather, but it's all part of the act, isn't it? It's all part of the act with uh, boxing, being a personality and all the rest of it. Um, so that's that. So it was interesting to watch it, uh, but there was only ever going to be one winner, even though McGregor did start quite well. Now, next thing I want to talk about, just very briefly, uh, counter offers on eBay, best offers and, you know, uh, buy it now and all that kind of stuff. So oh, it's getting worse. It really is. I don't know if it's just where I'm at or maybe it's just me. Uh, I don't know what's going on. But there's a few Sega Saturn games and PS1 games that recently I put offers in on eBay. The Buy It Nows were like, say, 50 quid, um, and they've got a best offer. So if you've got a, a Buy It Now at 50 quid, these are PAL games in the UK, obviously, that I'm looking for. So if you've got a PlayStation 1 game or a Sega Saturn game for £50, buy it now, but you've got a best offer, then I think it's reasonable to go in there with a best offer of 44 quid, as I did. Um, for uh, one game in particular. I'm trying to think what it was. I think it may have been Die Hard... No, hang on. Um, a Die Hard Arcade on the Saturn was one of them. Maybe that wasn't the 44 quid one. Uh, Discworld was another on the PS1. And there was one other game. I think it was Burning Rangers. That was a lot more. Actually, yeah, I think with Burning Rangers, the guy was looking for 90 quid or a best offer. So I offer, uh, I offered sorry, 79 plus shipping. Now, I thought 79 is a decent offer to go in there with. You know, I'm not taking the piss. I'm not lowballing someone by saying, oh, I'll give you 20 quid for it, like some people do. You want 90 quid for it. It can usually go for that much. It can usually go for a little bit more, but it can sometimes go for a little bit less as well. So go in there with 79. I'm expecting a counter at maybe 84, 85, and I may accept it. But just to get dismissed straight away, rejected, no counter, that to me is ridiculous. You know, if I'd have gone in there, like I say, with 20 quid, 40 quid, 50, even 60, Fine, reject it. But 79, I thought was realistic. Discworld, I think they wanted like kind of 46 for that. I went in with about, around about 38, give or take. Rejected. I mean, come on, just counter offer. That's what it's there for. Don't just reject it. I don't understand. And then also in the past, I've had offers where it would, let's say someone wants 40 quid for a game or even $40 because it happens on eBay.com in America as well. Someone wants $40 for a game. I'll offer like 37. And they'll counter thirty nine fifty. It's like, come on, seriously, this is absolutely ridiculous. So I don't know if, if people on eBay are just getting unrealistic or getting greedy, or whether it's people just not really understanding how it works. I don't know, but for me, if you're gonna put a buy, it, sorry, if you're gonna put a best offer on there, then accept offers or at least, at the very least, counter when you get a reasonable offer. If you get a low ball offer, fine, but if if not counter anyway i just want to sum that up because um and talk about it very quickly because it, it kind of irritated me and it, it was like maybe it was a full moon but it happened on several items in the space of just a few hours and every one of the offers that i put in was rejected every one i wasn't counted on any of them and there must have been a good half a dozen all of them on ps1 and, and pal um ps1 and pal ps1 and sega saturn pal um games from uh, from the uk was, this is just weird i didn't understand it so um yeah, so these days what I tend to do is I, I tend to ignore the best offers. I can't be bothered. I just like the straight buy it nows. I used to like just the, the auctions, but even these days I can't be bothered. And then invariably I forget as well, and that annoys me. Have you ever had that? You must have done, where you're watching an item, you really want it, you forget to bid on it, and you're thinking, oh God, how much did it go for? Please go for a fortune, because then you're not going to feel bad. And then you see it went for just a few quid, and you're like, oh no. I could have had that for just a few quid or a few dollars, uh, but because you forgot to bid, you didn't win it. So whenever that happens to me and I forget to bid on an item, I always hope it goes for a fortune so I can at least turn around and go, oh, well, it's not too bad. It went for more than I would have paid or it went for about the going rate. But when it goes to something that I, you know, is an absolute steal, oh, that's, that's a pain in the ass to see. That really is. So next up, what I want to talk about, again, very, very briefly, uh, Sonic Mania. I've been playing Sonic Mania recently. There'll be some footage on the screen right now. And uh, yeah, it's really good. Now, I did touch upon this in my last vid. I mentioned the fact that I bought it. Uh, it may have been my last vlog vid, actually. And uh, yeah, I, even though I did mention it, I'm going to repeat it uh, in this vid. It's not going to be for everybody because whilst the digital game, that's the thing which is going to annoy a lot of people, 
whilst the digital game was twenty dollars, so you can go on your PlayStation Network store or your Xbox One store, or even uh, for the Switch, it's out. Uh, I don't know if it's out on the PC, but twenty dollars, a pretty decent price. Well, in fact, a very good price. But here's the thing: if you want the physical version, well, you can kind of get one. Uh, again, apologies for repeating myself because I did talk about this in my last vlog vid. But you can get a physical version of of sorts because you get the big box, you get a statue with like the Genesis or the Mega Drive or whatever it is. I don't even know if it switches variations. So in PAL regions, like, do you get a, a Mega Drive or do you get a Gen? I don't even know if they if they went to those efforts. It may have just been a, a Genesis. I've, I've not got a clue. I've not looked at that. But you so see, you get that. You get the download code and you get like a couple of extras. It may be like a key ring or a keychain and a, a postcard or sticker or something like that for seventy dollars. Seventy dollars. That's a lot of money when you don't get the physical game. So if you want all that stuff. That's great, but you still don't get a physical game because it comes with a download code for that $70. For me, that's too much. I'd much rather do what I did, which is buy the game digitally for $20 on the PlayStation Network, and that way I save $50. I don't have to buy the other stuff, which I don't really need. Now, if it came with an actual physical box that I could put on a shelf or put down there, you, oh no, where, where are they? There they are, down there with the, with the PS4 games. There's some others in that kind of pull-out Again, it's hard to do this in that pull-out drawer. Um, but yeah, if it came in a physical case, then fine. I, I wouldn't mind, I don't think, paying $70. But I'm very reluctant, and that's an understatement, to the point of, well, I didn't do it and won't do it, pay $70 for um, a digital code, essentially, with a, a statue of, of Sonic on a Genesis or a Mega Drive. It's just a lot of money. I mean, if you love Sonic, if you're a Sonic fan, if you like collectibles, if you like limited editions or those big box sets... Then I guess fine, you know it's it's a good deal and you and you're gonna do it. Um, but it's kind of meeting somewhere somebody half <coughs> excuse me meeting somebody halfway. I clearly need another swig of tea. It's meeting somebody halfway, isn't it? It's saying, well, it's a digital game, but we're gonna release, you know, um, a physical version of it, but without the physical game. Uh, it sits a little bit uncomfortably with me, if I'm honest. But the game itself is really good. It really harks back to Sonic of the early 90s. It's basically the Mega Drive Genesis game. The music is amazing. I mean, really great. It's proper, cheesy, kind of early 90s stuff, but it fits so well. It's just Sonic music, basically. It sounds so good. It looks the same. It's got the same feel and vibe. It's fast. It's challenging. It can be frustrating in parts, which I guess is the same as challenging, but it's a really fun experience. A proper throwback to uh, old retro games, 16-bit days. So if you love Sonic, if you love the 16-bit era, you've got to get you've got to get Sonic Mania. Forget the fact that you don't technically get a physical version of it, even though you get that big box. It's not an actual game, as I touched upon. So forget that if you can, and just play the game. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. Does it really matter if you've got a physical version of it? I know we all like physical versions. We would prefer them, but for me. It's just a personal thing, but for me, I'm not that bothered about digital games. With modern stuff, with retro stuff, it has to be physical. I don't want emulation, although I don't mind to try it, to try games on emulation. But I don't. all the games I buy, retro games, have to be physical. They have to. It's as simple as that. With modern games, yes, I would prefer physical. Not going to lie, I'd prefer it. But I don't mind going digital. For me, it's all about price. So in the future, like the PS5, the PS6, or whatever, uh, way down the line, I can potentially, it would depend on a number of factors, but I could personally, potentially see myself going digital only for modern games, because there's no real nostalgic element to it. Although with that said, nostalgia is usually formed, or always formed, as a result of time passing. So even though obviously the PS4 isn't nostalgic now, maybe to me and to you and to others, it will be in 20, 30 years time. So I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but I can see myself going digital. But that's a, that is a subject to elaborate a lot more on in the future, so maybe I'll do that. So yeah, Sonic Mania is really, really good. And then the other game I've been playing is FIFA 18. Now the real game, the main game, isn't out yet, but yesterday or the day before, whenever it was, there was the demo which has become available on the PlayStation Network. I don't know about the Xbox, I'm guessing it's probably out as well. And I downloaded it. I'm playing it. In fact, it's on the background. It's a bit of a static screen. It, well, it's ever so slightly moving, but obviously you don't see any gameplay. Um, yeah, it's just FIFA. It's slightly changed. It does slightly change each year with new moves and a few uh, new features and all that kind of stuff. 
obviously the big thing is that you get updated teams or you know, rosters and squads and all that kind of stuff. So if you like that, if that is essential to you, then you've got to buy it. And it is to me. I know a lot of people say, well, it's just a sports game. And, you know, after a year or so, or even less than a year, you can get it for like a pound in a charity shop. And you probably can. But if you're going to play the game a lot, which is what I do, then for me, paying $60 for it, it it's a no brainer. I'm going to play the game a lot. And on top of that, I want the new squads, the new stadiums in place. That's what I want. I don't want to play with the old stuff. I mean, I like going back to the old games, but I like playing with the new FIFA teams. And uh, and so to me, it's worth it because I'm going to play the game. Although the funny thing is, I say I play the game. I'm the same every year with FIFA. I never take it online or Pro Evolution. Uh, I'll slightly touch upon that in a second. I never take it online. Being a massive football fan, I don't like playing FIFA online. It, it's weird. I don't know why. Maybe it's the over-competitiveness uh, of, the, of the gameplay that people have and online and all that kind of stuff. I just can't be bothered. And I don't really play the career mode. I just basically just play exhibition games and stuff. But I love it. So to some, that's a waste of money. But I'm always playing it throughout the course of a year. So for me, $60 for the new FIFA is worth it. Now, Pro Evolution Soccer, uh, that demo has also came out. I've also been playing that on the PlayStation 4. And it's all right. But for me, personally, as much as I do like Pro Evolution, it really changed for me around about, sort of, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. Up until that point, especially if you go back to like the PlayStation 2 and Xbox era, Pro Evolution Soccer was amazing. And then it got to the 360 version in 2006. I think it was PES 6. I think that's what uh, the one it was. And the gameplay changed. It's like when they went to a new system with a new hardware with the Xbox 360, everything changed. It, it felt a bit weird. The controls didn't feel right. It, it looked a bit different. It wasn't the same. It didn't play with that same fluidity. And then within two or three years... For me, FIFA completely overtook it. And I think what happened is Konami became very complacent. They just thought everybody was going to buy their games because Pro Evolution Soccer on the PS2 and Xbox was so dominant. It was the best game. FIFA was a bit of a joke. And I think they just kept releasing the same thing. And then it took a step backwards with the 360. And for me, I think EA Sports really stepped up to the plate. They went back to the drawing board. They changed the mechanics, the gameplay, it improved immeasurably. And me, or for me, personally, I think FIFA's the much better game now. Pro Evolution's a good game. I think the last two have gone a little bit better. And I may get this latest one, the 2018 one. But I think FIFA is still in front. I really do. And it's weird how you can have a, a franchise which is so, so obviously ahead of its rival. And then it just switches. It's really, really bizarre. So yeah, Pro Evolution for me, I've been playing the demo. It's okay. Um, I do prefer it to the last one and the previous one and definitely the previous three or four before that one. But it, FIFA's still ahead for me. But I will buy both of them and maybe after a prolonged period of time then what may happen is I, uh, I get to like Pez again. and I, I may even prioritise again. Time will tell. Uh, again, that's, that's something to, to talk about in the future. Now, two other things that I want to mention. Very quickly, this one really. It's about music and vinyl vids. So as you'll know, I do relatively regular uh, music vids, vinyl vids. I'll pick up music uh, CDs and books and DVDs and Blu-rays, anything involving music, basically. And I aim to do one a month. And sometimes if I can do two a month, great. Uh, but sometimes a month or two will go by and I don't do one. But the aim is one a month. And that, that will continue. I, I don't have any plans to, uh, to stop doing that anytime soon. In fact, I won't because who doesn't love music? But... I did touch upon a while ago, and I'm going to mention it again now, just so nobody's surprised if you see it in your inbox or your subs box. But every now and again, what I'll do is I'll buy like a limited edition box set uh, or a collector's edition or a deluxe edition uh, or, or something like a special edition of, it could be vinyl or a Blu-ray or CD set or whatever it is. And what I'm going to start doing, uh, not particularly regularly, but every now and again, a standalone video for like a kind of an unboxing, if you like, or to show you what you get inside that. Now, I'm not doing that, heads up, I'm not doing that video at all for comments. I'm not doing it for likes. I'm not doing it for, for views. It's not about that. I don't, I don't mind if nobody comments. That's not what it's about. The reason I want to do it is because sometimes what I do, and this is the same for games and stuff, I guess, but specifically music, if it's something that I'm looking for, like maybe it's an expensive box set, uh, strictly limited numbers 
and maybe or it's you know maybe it's really expensive or it could be really expensive as well maybe it's just like a standard release but it's really pricey you know rather than just go out there and outlay you know lay out that money outlay lay out that was a butcher that sentence if i want to spend that money basically again script i've got a script uh, if i did that wouldn't be happening but yeah if i if it's a, if it's an expensive item and i'm a little bit wary of spending big bucks on uh, on a box set for example what i will do is i'll go onto youtube and I'll look to see if someone's done an unboxing. So then I can see what you get for your money. And then I can determine whether I want to spend my money on that item. Do you get enough for your money in that box set? You know, does it look a little bit cheap? Is it not very well put together? Do I want it? But what I may do is wait for a price reduction big time, you know, or is it is it worth just spending the money? And so I find those videos really helpful and I hardly ever comment on them. And I certainly obviously don't dislike them. I sometimes might like them, but I basically just watch it, make up my mind whether it's for me, and then I move on. And I find it really helpful. So I want to do that to other people. I want to like open some box sets and show you and tell you what you get for your money. And then that way, if somebody out there is looking for it, they can watch my video and determine for themselves whether they want to spend that money on that particular item or whether they want to wait or in fact just not get it at all. So it's there as like a reference to, to be helpful for people. So I'm going to start doing those. Again, nobody should be surprised by now. You know, I do my gaming stuff, my football stuff, my music stuff, the diary stuff. There's a lot of things on this channel. Nobody should be surprised if I do something a little bit different. And I know you're not, but I just wanted to throw that out there. So if, you, if and when you see those videos in the future, and you may see one at the end of the month, then you know in advance that they could be a, a somewhat regular thing, maybe once every month or every few months. It's not going to be every day or every week or anything. Um, so that's that. So bear that in mind. Now I've got one more topic that I want to talk about. I've been talking for a while. But what's new there? Um, yeah, this is really funny actually. Now this has gone back a few weeks. So uh, a YouTuber, I won't reveal who he is and I won't tell you where he lives. Um, he requested not to, to show where he lives. And I understand why. Obviously the safety, you know, incident and all that kind of stuff. Um, but a few weeks back, a YouTuber... Um, who makes a lot of videos in the community, and you'll probably know him. Uh, hasn't made videos for a while. I'm kind of slowly revealing his identity, so I'll stop there. But he uh, he sent me a message on Facebook, and he was like, he said, all right, Alex, he said, I think I've relatively recently moved into a, a house which is near your old one. Now, that old one is the one which I always talk about buying back. And I know it's ridiculous. It's nostalgia taking over again. But I really do like the idea of buying my old house back, the house that I lived in, when we moved down south um, from the age of like eight, I guess, or whenever we moved down, eight or nine, up into like 16 or 17, there or thereabouts. So in the scheme of things, I wasn't really there that long, you know, just under 10 years. But it was a really pivotal part of my life because it took in the first few years of before I was a teenager and then all the way through to my mid-teens. So you go through a lot in those years, don't you? Like, you, you know, the... Um, the growing up and nostalgia when it comes to games and all that kind of stuff. Mega Drive, SNES, Amstrad, Atari ST, Amiga. All those systems are just synonymous with that house and those memories. So it means a lot to me. And I've always talked about buying that house back. Whether it's realistic or not, it's probably unrealistic. But you never say never. I do like the idea of doing it. It's probably going to cost about 250, 300 grand mine. But I don't have that kind of money. But... um there we are. Maybe in the future, who knows? But anyway, the point is, this YouTuber contacted me. He said, I think I've moved into your old house. He said, can you tell me the address? And I thought, I don't mind doing that because I don't live there anymore. So it's not like, you know, you can find any information out. Um, so I said, yes. Yeah. So I said, this is the address. And he went, he says, yeah. He says, it's, it's, I live near it. He says, I'm going to send you a video. And I thought, okay, that sounds a bit weird. But not in a, not in a nasty way. It was a curious way. Weird in a curious way because I didn't know what the video was going to be. And um, so a few minutes later, he, he, send me, he sends me a video, right? So I click on the video. The video starts with him in his house, uh, just about to open his front door, and he's talking over the top, live. And he's like, all right, Alex, just thought I'd make this video for you. Anyway, so he opens his front door. And as soon as he opens his front door, it was obvious where he was. He was just around the corner from my old house. So he walks down the street. It must have took him 15 seconds, maybe no more than that, 15, 20 seconds. And there it was, my old house that I talked about, the one that I showed on YouTube about three or four years ago. I did like a Blue Tonic photo album, if anyone remembers that one. And I talk about that house and buying it back. I talk about it in that vid. Uh, and that particular house, 
uh, a YouTuber has just moved literally 20 seconds away. And it was just really weird just seeing him. Just seeing the house was strange in like in, in now, you know, in 2017. Um, but also the fact that he lives there and I used to live there and it's this weird kind of connection. Life is weird. It just it struck me as really odd, but really nice as well. And uh, and the weird thing about that, if that wasn't weird enough, him moving to that house and recognising it from where I used to live, if that wasn't weird enough, the house he lives in, I have been in before because there used to be two sisters in there. And I've touched upon this in the past. Their dad uh, was called John Smolders. And he was a former Bournemouth goalkeeper. He only played a few games and he wasn't that good. Um, but yeah, he used to live in that house and his two daughters did. And I remember um, I was somewhat on friendly terms with, with his younger daughter. Amy, I think was her name. And a lot of us we used to knock around together and play football and all that kind of stuff. So loads of those houses, obviously, a lot of my friends lived in. I think they've all moved now, as you'd expect from like, this was like the late 80s when we moved in, so... Times have changed. And that's the other thing, you know, if I moved into that house or if we moved into that house, uh, at whatever stage in the future, everything would be different. You know, the neighbours would be different. 99% of them, surely. There'll be a few knocking around, I guess. But 99% or certainly 90%, I think, of neighbours would have moved long, long ago. Um, streets would have, not so much the streets would have changed, the same houses there and stuff. But it's a different era. It's a different time. I wouldn't be going to school in the morning. Um, my parents wouldn't be living there, of course. Uh, it, it would it would be different. You know, all the friends, like I said, would have moved. We wouldn't be going out after school because we wouldn't be at school, playing football like outside on the park. So would moving back to your old house, would it actually be quite, I don't mean literally, but would it almost be quite painful and hurtful in a sense because it would make you quite sad for the days that are no longer there? Maybe it would. Or maybe it wouldn't. Maybe you could make it work. I don't know. I guess unless you experience it, you never know. Maybe you've moved back into your childhood home. I, I highly doubt it. Um, or maybe, maybe you have. I don't know. But I don't think many people do that. I think a lot of people like the idea of doing it. But the practicalities of it, you know, you've got to want to do it for a start. Then you've got to do it. You've got to encourage your partner, your wife, your whatever to do it with you. Um, maybe you can't even afford it, even if you wanted to. There's, there's a lot of factors that go into it. But I do like the idea of doing it. And I do think I could work around the fact that it's a different era and friends wouldn't be living there anymore. I think for me, just being there would kind of work. But it's not for everyone, is it? You know, a lot of people want to move on. It's like, the past is great to talk about, but is it really great to try and relive? For some, that's kind of not a healthy thing, is it? It's like gaming as well. We all buy these retro games, essentially to try and relive. That's what we're doing. Our past. Now, we can't do it. We can never bring back the past. Unless in the future, as madcap as it sounds, time travel uh, is invented. Um, but I, that sounds so futuristic and ridiculous, it's insane. But who knows what the future can hold? You know, science and technology is weird. But anyway, I really am rambling here. Um, again, proof once again of uh, not having a script. Mr. Script. Mr. Script is, is a, a name more unappropriate for a YouTuber. Anyway, so I'll wrap that up. Thank you for watching. Been a bit of a, a rambling vid as per usual, I guess, but I just wanted to get this one out. There'll be a football video going up either just before or just after this, uh, a little bit late to the party with that one. And then there'll be another football vid, so sorry for whacking the football vids out, but I like to try and cover every City game, and they're playing tonight. So there'll be two quick fire football vids, but obviously you don't have to watch them. Clearly, if you're not a football fan, you won't. I get that. Only ever watch what appeals to you. I'm never going to be offended. Uh, and similarly, don't be offended if you do something and I don't uh, comment. Um, and also, just because I don't comment, it doesn't mean to say I don't watch. I may be watching on like a, a, an iPad or an iPod or iPod Touch. I may be watching on the television and it's a hassle to comment. So don't ever feel offended. Anyway, who cares? Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.